Hi, good morning. Here I just wanted to create a quick video uh, that's a follow-up to the Velma V5 video where we're comparing baseline and clear-cut forest disturbance. Uh, so if you're in one of the hydrology courses using this module, then you uh, likely are seeing these quantitative questions. Um, question two seems okay and straightforward. You're just looking at, in the daily results file, the above ground, that's the AG stem, above ground stem biomass volume. So that's the amount of live biomass. So that'd be your, the trunk and uh, stem of your tree plus uh, the major branches versus there's another um, biomass pool that Velma tracks, which is the, the tiny twigs and the leaves. Um, actually, mainly just the leaf, the leaf component of the tree. So, but yeah, so you just look at before the harvest event and then the day following the harvest event, and then that will give you the delta. Um, but there might have been a little confusion because the video doesn't explicitly explain how to find uh, question one and three. So I wanted to get at those. So question one first, the total increases in water per year post clear cut. 86 389. Uh, there's two ways you could do this. Uh, there's an easy way if this is directly the only thing you're going to want to look at. But um, I actually calculate it the slightly more involved way just because of question three, FYI. So I'm going to show both ways regarding question one, but the, um, the more involved way first because, again, leading to, that leads to the data being prepped for question three. And so what you would want to do is look at your uh, baseline um, daily results file. And that's these data here. So I copied the timing information, which is the loop through day. And then once I had those, then I added on a date. You'll notice that this date starts in 1981. So I did all of this for um, all the data, but then I deleted all of 1980 because they, you always want to throw away the first year in Velma, which is water balance working itself out. And Velma initializes with the field capacity maxed out for all soil uh, voxels. And so you need at least one full season, uh, summer season, for those to uh, equal out, uh, balance out the way they should be, sometimes even more. Um, some simulations, if we can, throw away two or three years of that's um, feasible, so. but at least one, always at least one. <clears throat> so that's why this data started in 1981. Uh, all the 1980 data I deleted. Uh, but before I did that, I had my timing, my runoff all, and I added base for baseline on the front of it. And then I also included my observed data, but those are not needed directly to answer the question. Uh, but what you also do need is the runoff all from the other daily results file uh, for the clear cut scenario. So the main things we're focusing in on are the baseline runoff and the clear cut runoff all. <clears throat> and so once you have these and you get rid of the first year, then you can calculate a delta. And I did it by subtracting the clear cut because the clear cut is going to cause, at least in the early years after the clear cut, it's going to cause an increase in runoff. And so I did um, the larger value, the increased runoff minus the uh, baseline runoff. So for me, it ended up being columns I and F. If you set this up slightly different, it may not be. Um, I put in this filler column to separate the clear cut, um, just for a visual reference. But then you end up with this delta. And once you have this delta, that's your, uh, let's get back to the question, that is your uh, daily increase in flow. So then to get the year, you just work through the few years here in your Excel file and you sum, I summed in column K, so let's go down here find one of them. Hopefully it's in this file. Oh, I'm not seeing it. Hmm. Maybe I deleted them here. Oh, no, there's one. Oh, I just didn't focus until after the clear cut. That's what this is. So let's go down to the next one. Here we go. 
<clears throat> so then I just summed all of those deltas per day over this year here this is 1986 and so with them summed then you get the uh, yearly uh, increase over the year now there is actually an easier way to do this and that is if you went and looked instead at the daily results you looked at the annual hydrology results so this is already summed the data for you and so if you took the annual results from the clear cut and then uh, added in the baseline and then subtracted year by year those differences you'll end up with the the same value um, so you'll that's an easier way of getting at the or a quicker way of getting at the annual change in flow um, but the reason I did it this way was because of the other question so for question three trying to uh, find the largest uh, observed flow events and then calculate their difference um, this I realized um, just this morning was maybe a little you could view this a couple different ways uh, and so I'm going to show what I um, I guess really intended which is to see uh, when at the peak storm events what was the increase but the problem with my wording here in this question was that if you, you could have a very large storm event but due to other aspects of the model and reality you may not actually have an increase in a large increase in flow versus you could have a slightly smaller storm event that causes a very large increase of flow so a lot of that has to just do with the timing of the year um, snowpack maybe there's like um, some type of inverse uh, warming event going on where there's a increase in snow melt um, or it could just be the time of the year where you know going into um, out of winter into the spring um, the soil matrix is already fully saturated versus going from the summer into the fall um, so in one of those scenarios you could have a very large storm event but there's capacity to store the water so the clear cut won't have as much influence versus if the soil matrix is already fully saturated there's nowhere for that excess water to go and so then you end up with an even larger uh, flow event. So, um, so the intent was to try to reveal the large flow events. And this, sorry about this. Quite the wording here is uh, does not quite get at that. So the way you could get at either though, uh, either way of looking at the question, is to take those same data and plot your date versus your baseline runoff versus your uh, clear cut um, or even add in your observed data. So here I'm actually looking at the baseline versus observed, but then I plotted the delta. So the delta is this gray line was probably pretty hard to see. And that's getting at the, um, the increase in flow between the clear cut and the baseline. And then the observed data is here to then reveal the actual storm event um, volume and if I take the delta what kind of helps uh, let's see. why is it not what I'm expecting oh here we go so if I go in and plot the format of the data points and go in the secondary axis this helps reveal the deltas to some degree because now these very large um, gray, the gray line is the delta, but you'll see that there was not a large storm event early on, right after the clear cut, yet very large delta inflow. Um, and now we're on a different axis because I, I, this is on a secondary axis, so the deltas you need to look to the right to see the volume, <clears throat> and then the actual flow or the simulated flows are all um, still on the left axis, vertical axis. And so, you know, but ignoring the first year and starting at 86 and on, <clears throat> then you can start to then uh, tease apart these very large events uh, or very large deltas because of um, the clear cut.
And so what I actually did was then plotted only the deltas in comparison and just made my x-axis all line up the same. And so then here you can then start to look at um, for 1986, this was the largest uh, delta. Um, so again, not the largest storm event per se, it might have been, but this was the largest change in flow due to the clear cut. And so at 21.18, uh, if you're looking within one year, this is still 86. So it was a large event, but same year. Right, this one was. Ah, this was uh, also an 86. So then moving on to 87, had a very large event here. Or sorry, <laughs> trying to watch my wording. Very large, um, very large change during a event, but again, may not be the largest event. Uh, within the whole year and then again for 88 and then 89 and so we're even already seeing that dwindling effect uh, due to recovery that's highlighted in uh, the papers that were provided um, really would this though also I uh, wouldn't read into this too much because this could also just be due to the, the climate this could just been a dry year or a not so wet winter season just itself and so you'd really want to run this out further and look at the observed data more um, but this gets at uh, the peak the delta uh, during some of the peak events um, over those years and then alternatively if you wanted to look at the observed events then you would have to look at let me see if I can get rid of get rid of the deltas uh, so then if you want to look at the observed data um, directly that would be the orange here you need to look at the orange data and find the largest storm event uh, per year and then compare that then to the uh, delta that occurred at that event so, so hopefully this uh, video is helpful in assessing the hydrology a little bit closer Thanks.